by special recording. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the oat cereal ready to eat, and Wheaties, breakfast of champions, present The Lone Ranger. With a speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a haughty high old silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Hail, Silver. Hey! Jenny is ten, and is she good? She's skip rope champ of the neighborhood. She's so quick because she knows she's got gold power from Cheerios. Yes, she's got gold power. There she goes. She's feeling her Cheerios. 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 Cheerios, the cereal everybody loves. No other cereal looks like Cheerios. It's shaped like little letter O's. No other cereal tastes like Cheerios. It's the only ready-to-eat cereal with this fresh, toasted oat flavor. No other cereal is like Cheerios. You see, Cheerios is made from oats, and every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle-building food. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. Yes, the good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones, and muscles. Have Cheerios every morning. Then you'll hear people say... She's feeling her Cheerios. Bushy Congers, tough gunman, rode a trail that led to the mountain hideout of Leo Lopez, Mexican bandit chief. Though the Mexican government offered a substantial reward for Leo's capture, he and his followers were still at large and maintained a stronghold in the foothills beyond Piedras Negras, across the border from Eagle Pass. Bushy reached a part of the trail bordered by large boulders when... Don't put your words, senor. You're covered. Oh, 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 steady there. I have a message for you, chief. Take me to him. A short time later, Bushy dismounted before a cabin located on a small plateau. Look at him. Go into the cabin, senor. Right. Uh, what's this hombre you bring to me, Carlos? I'll answer that, Mr. Lopez. I'm known as Bushy Congers. I came across from the States with a message for you. Message? From whom is this message you mention? From an old sidekick of yours, Hans Kassen. Hans Kassen? Of course. My German friend who helped me when I tried to seize control of Chihuahua. Uh, the governor's troops were stronger than we thought, and we were both lucky to escape. Hans crossed the border to Texas, and I have not heard from him since. Yeah, here's a message he gave me to bring to you. Yeah, gracias, senor. Lopez, I... what? Can you make out what he wrote? I see, senor. <laughs> His Spanish was terrible... And his English is atrocious. <laughs> but I may got the meaning of the note. Do you know what is in the note, Senor Congress? Well, Hans said it was about getting you to join forces with him on some deal. See, si. and he also says you are to be trusted, amigo. Huh. Sit down, Senor Congress. Oh, thanks. In this note, Hans says only that he wants me and my men to join forces with him for a certain purpose. He writes that you, senor, will explain what he has in mind. He has a hideout in the foothills north of Eagle Pass. He's got about ten men with him. Oh? Now, the deal is this. 
A wagon train carrying a new type rifle and ammunition will head for Fort McIntosh, south of Eagle Pass, in a few days. The wagons will follow the Rio Grande Trail on the American side. Hans figures if you and he can get those rifles, maybe five or six wagon loads of them, then you'd be in a position to really go places. Come, Hans is right. Here. Here's a drawing showing how to reach the hideout. Mm. Oh, that is good. Very good. Tell Hans we shall be very happy to join him. I shall have my men go across and wait for me at a certain place. Then I'll lead them to Hans' hideout. <laughs> the night at various points along the shallow Rio Grande, Leo Lopez men moved across by twos and threes. The following morning at dawn, Leo stood with his Lieutenant Carlos, looking at the map Bushy had given him. A strong morning breeze was blowing. Here is the trail we take, Carlos. It leads into the foothills. Si, senor. At that point, we turn right at a large pointed rock until we reach a narrow pass. There, Bushy will meet us. Bueno. I think the men are ready to leave now, Senor Leo. Uh, we started once. About... Uh, the map is blown out of my hand. The wind's carried it into the air. It's blowing away. Uh, no matter. I have the directions now in my head. Uh, tell the men to mount. We'll leave now. Oye, hombres! That afternoon, the Lone Ranger and Toto rode the trail from Laredo toward Eagle Pass. A team of sabi. You think gang marshal in Laredo tell us about? Maybe hide near Eagle Pass? The gang has been operating in that territory, Toto. The marshal in Laredo has to go to Corpus Christi for a few days. That's why he asked us to try to locate the gang. Oh. If we locate the hideout, then we'll contact the sheriff in Eagle Pass, and he'll form a large posse to go after the outlaws. Owen, get off the house. The masked man and Indian camped for the night in a small wooded grove a short distance from where Leo and his men had met. At dawn the following morning, Tato went to saddle his horse, Scout. The horse looked up, then started nibbling the long grass again. Tuttle noticed a piece of paper which Scout sniffed. No, Scout, do not eat paper. Here. Let <laughs> me take it. Ah, oh, paper has strange marks. Me show Lone Ranger later. Tato settled Scout after putting the paper into his pocket and led him to the camp. Then the two men mounted. Easy, sir. Easy, sir. Come on, sir. At the hideout camp, Leo Lopez and his men met Hans and his group. The two leaders sat in Hans' cabin discussing their plans. <laughs> ah, it's good, Leo, that you agreed to join me. After we get those rifles, you and I can do a lot. Together. But first, amigo, we must get the new rifles. Without them, we shall still be fugitives, no? Yeah, that is right, Leo. We must get those rifles. One of my spies returned today with the news that the wagon train has started along the river trail. Tomorrow, it will be a few miles north of Eagle Pass. We have 30 good men. It should be easy. I agree, Senor Hans. If we move against the wagons with 30 men and take them by surprise, we should not have much trouble. Then that's what we'll do. The trail is bordered with thick woods on one side and the river on the other. We'll wait in the woods a few miles north of here. Then strike suddenly when the wagons reach that point. Meanwhile, the Lone Ranger and Tonto searched the hills without success. They were returning to their camp near sundown. They rounded the bend and came face to face with a troop of cavalry. Oh, 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 They're shooting over our heads as a warning, Toto. We'll have to face them. Uh-huh. Oh, 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 oh. Mister, we have you covered. We'll take your guns and I'm sending you as prisoners back to the fort. If you try to escape, the men will have orders to shoot you. Don't be hasty, Lieutenant Drake. What? You know my name? Yes, we met before. When and where? At Fort McIntosh three months ago. I came there at the colonel's request during an Indian uprising. I was in disguise and without my mask. Hold on, I remember now. Come on. Oh, oh, get in. Of 
course. That voice, I couldn't mistake that. You're the Lone Ranger. That's right. Glad to meet you again. I'm sorry I didn't realize who you were at once. At ease, man. These men are friends. Oh, yeah. thanks, Lieutenant. Uh, what are you and your Indian friend doing up this way? We came at the request of the United States Marshal and Laredo to search for an outlaw gang, presumably led by a man named Hans Carson. Yes, I've heard of the gang. In fact, the colonel was anxious about some rifles coming to us by wagon train, a new type rifle. He feared Carson might get wind of it and try to take them. You're going to escort the wagon? That's right, sir. There is also danger from the tribe of renegade Indians. Those rifles would be a prize for either group. Well, that's right. Well, we'll go on now, sir. I uh, expect to camp several miles north of here and wait for the wagons. If you want to get in touch with us, we'll be easy to find. Thanks, Lieutenant. I'll remember that. Adios. Goodbye, sir. Adios. Move to the Help! 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 Curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Hey there, get a load of this terrific offer. Now you can get a copy of a real, genuine, original Confederate bill free in each specially marked package of Cheerios. There are nine different bills in the whole set ranging from $1 to $1,000. And each bill looks so much like the original Confederate bill, you can hardly tell the difference. Say, won't you and your gang have fun with these? As I said, one bill comes free with each special Cheerios package. No waiting, nothing to send in. It's right at your grocer's. If you get a $2 bill in your first package, you may get a $500 bill in the next, and so on. It's easy to collect the whole set of nine different bills. And I bet you'll want to be the first in your neighborhood to have them all. And you'll have something else that's good, too. Cheerios. Seems everybody loves that wonderful toasted oat flavor. And everybody needs the go power Cheerios gives. Remember now, inside each special Cheerios package, there's a copy of a real genuine Confederate bill. Start collecting yours today. Now to continue. When the Lone Ranger and Toto arrived at camp, the Indian remembered the paper he had put into his pocket that morning. He showed it to the Lone Ranger. Uh, Kimasabi. Yes? Yeah? Here, paper with markings like map on one side. We find it here this morning. Mm -hmm. It does look like a map showing the route to some definite place. Yes, the route indicated here leads into the foothills. It looks like a drawing of pointed rock. Ah. Uh -huh. That arrow indicates that from there one goes to a narrow pass. Uh, me wonder who make drawn. I don't know. It would be interesting to know why anyone took the trouble to make such a carefully drawn map. There are plenty of good hiding places in those foothills. Isn't that right? I think the moon will be bright tonight, Tonto. We'll follow this route as shown on the map and see what we discover. Later, in the light of the bright moon, the masked man and Indian followed the route indicated on the map. When they reached Pointed Rock, they stopped. Oh, 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 easy, 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 the path run on the map isn't far from here, Tonto. We'll leave the horses among the trees and go forward on foot. They moved cautiously, keeping their eyes open for guards. Instead of going directly to the pass, they climbed to the rim of a canyon above the narrow pass. From there, they could look down upon Cassin's camp. They hadn't been seen by the guard who was stationed at the pass. Toto, look at all the horses down there. Uh, two, three dozen, maybe. I wish we could get closer to that cabin. We might find out who those men are. Akima Sabe, yeah. we go down inside the canyon. It have rocks, meds, me use. Yes, I think you could make it at that. The brush going on the sides of the canyon will keep you from being seen. Uh, me go down and get back soon. Like a shadow... Tonto left the Lone Ranger's side and started down a steep canyon wall. Protruding rocks and bushes helped his descent, and he was careful not to dislodge any stones that might indicate his presence. The Lone Ranger waited for some time. He was about to go look for Tonto when the Indian silently appeared beside him. Tonto, 
I was afraid something had happened. Oh, me all right, Kimasabi. Me get close to cabin. Me hear voices. One talk like German, fella. Our plans are all set, Leo. We'll ride from here in the morning, hide in the woods up near the bend of the river, then take the wagons by surprise. We shall be ready, amigo. Once we have the rifles, we shall cross at night into Mexico and then make further plans, no? Yeah. <laughs> People will hear a great deal about us, Bill, if we get those new rifles. Otto, we must have heard Hans Carson talking. The other man could be his former partner, Leo Lopez. No doubt they'll join forces to attack the wagons and get the improved rifles. Uh, what we do? We know their plans now. We'll notify the troopers at their camp. Them come here, fight outlaws? Oh, that would be unwise. I'll suggest a better plan. All right, let's go. The Lone Ranger and Tonto started back to their horses without being seen. Kimasabi, storm comes. Yes, let's hurry to leave these foothills. Ah. By the time they reached the horses, wind began to blow strongly and lightning crackled around them. Let's hurry, Tonto. You see the castle? More silver, the must count. Man and Indians started back toward the river trail. They passed pointed rocks and rode down a narrow, rocky trail from the foothills. This can be bad storm, Kimasabi. We must keep going. Ah. Suddenly, there was a terrifying flash of lightning, immediately followed by a loud crash of thunder. Hey, Silver, follow quick. The big tree was struck. Follow his way. Oh, Silver, oh, The two horses sprang forward, just escaping the huge tree that flashed to the ground. The wind grew in intensity, and in spite of the need for haste to warn the troopers and save the wagon train, the Lone Ranger realized he and Toto must find safe shelter from the elements. By the light of the almost constant flashes of lightning, he finally saw a natural cave in a low cliff nearby. He and Toto turned from the trail and reached it safely. I've never been in a worse storm, Toto. Oh, it's plenty bad. We're not able to travel now. Perhaps it will soon be over. We'll lose a lot of time, but the storm's stopping. Though the trails may be cluttered and blocked in places, we'll try to reach the lieutenant and his men. Let's lead Silver and Scout outside. Come on, Silver. Come, Scout. Come, Scout. Come, Scout. We'll head for the trooper's camp now. Easy, steady, big fella. One, Silver. Get on, Scout. Trails were cluttered with debris from the storm, but the Lone Ranger and Toto pressed on. Later, they reached the camp where the lieutenant and the troopers had stopped for the night. Briefly, the masked man told the lieutenant what they had found out. When he finished, the officer said, I'll give orders at once for the troopers to ride to that hideout. Oh, wait, lieutenant. May I suggest a better plan? Of course. But we could take them by surprise. No, I doubt that. We managed to elude their guard, but a large group of horsemen couldn't do that. All right. What do you suggest, sir? Let them go to the woods Carson mentioned. Meantime, send one of your men to the sheriff in Eagle Rock for additional help. At dawn, we ride up the river trail beyond the place where the outlaws will be waiting later. Some of our men will come down with the wagons. Others will move into the woods with Tonto and me and surprise them. Good idea, sir. I'll get word to the sheriff at once. Later, the sheriff arrived at the camp with a large posse. He was introduced to the Lone Ranger by the lieutenant. Then the three men discussed their plans for outwitting the bandits. Meantime, Hans and Leo, with their men, waited in the thick woods at the bend in the trail for the wagons to appear. Then... Leo, Leo. Huh? The wagons, they're coming. The first one has just come around the bend. Uh, he's up to you now, Hans. You are giving the orders. All right. Mount your horses, everyone. Yes. And when I give the word, right out to the wagon shooting. <laughs> A large group of outlaws watched from hiding as the wagon train moved closer. Then, when it was opposite their position, Hans gave the order to attack. It's this time. Attack them. Use your guns. <laughs> the outlaws swarmed out of the woods toward the wagon, but as they neared them, they met with a sudden surprise. The edges of the canvas top were raised to disclose blazing rifles in the hands of troopers hidden in the wagon. The sides of the wagons had been reinforced to stop bullets, but the outlaws were unprotected. Hans and Leo had sent their men ahead of them. 
When they saw what was happening, they turned and rode hurriedly back into the thick woods, intending to desert their followers. Hurry, Leo. They tricked us. We must escape from the woods. Quick. Get on. As the two outlaw leaders fled into the woods, they heard the ringing cry and then saw a masked man and Indian, followed by many horsemen coming through the woods toward them. Look, the masked man and many others will be trapped. It's mine and use the protection of the trees. Oh, oh, oh. Get out of here. The Lone Ranger saw Hans Cotton dart behind a large tree. The masked man stopped quickly. Hold it, oh, you steady, big fella. I'll kill you. Hold it. No, oh, my leg. We want you, Hans Cotton. You and your gang are finished. It's all the Lopez gang. The Lone Ranger quickly tied both Hans and Leo. Tato and the posse had gone on through the woods and out to the river trail to help capture the rest of the outlaws. There, that will hold you, cowards. I saw you turn and leave your men in hopes of escaping. You can't get away now. We'll be back for you. The masked man returned to Silver and hurriedly mounting. Teddy Big Fellow. He rode out of the woods to help the others. <laughs> With both their leaders out of the fray, the outlaws were soon beaten. Many of them were wounded because of the surprise counterattack. Greatly outnumbered, the outlaws gave up and the fight ended. The wounded on both sides were attended to. Later, the Lone Ranger, the Sheriff, and the Lieutenant stood before Hans and Leo. So you caught Hans Carson and Leo Lopez, eh? I've heard a lot about them. Thanks to our masked friend and the Indian, we discovered their plans in time. We're glad we could help, Lieutenant. Now that you have captured them all, Tonto and I'll leave. Oh, uh, give my regards to your colonel and tell him we'll see him soon. Adios, everybody. Uh, goodbye. goodbye. Easy, steady, big fella. One, two, three. Oh, oh. Sheriff, there goes one of the nation's finest citizens. I feel it an honor to have met him and to know him. Hey, Lieutenant, you told me he was to be trusted and all that. But doggone it, who is he? <laughs> His real name is a mystery to the entire West, Sheriff. But to all of us who've been fortunate enough to have his advice and help, he's known as the Lone Ranger. I don't do Get on your way. Get on your way with Wheaties. You'll never get discouraged if you keep in mind champions are made, not born. Let's see how Tom Fears, pass catching end for the Los Angeles Rams, got on his way. At 12, Tom played football a lot, and many a bump is what he got. But he kept trying, never quit. And here's what helped to keep him fit. He ate his Wheaties every bit. Today, Tom sparks those touchdown drives. It's Wheaties still on which he thrives. Wheaties to Fears, there's a pass combination that's been clicking steady now for 19 years. Real energy in Wheaties. There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Okay, Tom, smack that pass. Hey, hey, hey! He's on his way, on his way. He's on his way, on his way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Cause champions are made, not born. Yes, sir. Get on your way. Get on your way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Breakfast of Champions. The Lone Ranger, a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, is created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. Directed by Charles D. Livingston and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. The Lone Ranger is brought to you by General Mills. Every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at this same time, be sure to listen. This recorded program has come to you from Detroit. This is ABC Radio Network.